Uh, are we uh, going to dive into this Michigan story here? Uh, Austin Meek, he is a staff writer covering Michigan football and basketball for The Athletic. He's written a couple of columns here, did a deep dive on this. Austin, kind enough to join us here. All right, help me understand, what did what is Michigan accused of doing uh, illegally? So there's an NCAA rule that's been on the books since 1994 that says that teams can't scout their opponents in person during the same season. And the allegation is that the staffer at Michigan, Connor Stallions, who's been suspended, was basically coordinating this off-campus scouting ring, buying tickets at other Big Ten stadiums and other stadiums around the country, and then coordinating people to go in and watch the games and film the signals of the other teams, which, at least according to the spirit of the NCAA rule, would be a violation. What if you're not filming? What if you're just observing? I mean, it like, how deep does this go that makes it illegal? If I just go and I'm watching, watching your mannerisms, your gestures, your signals, is that illegal? So there's two, actually two separate rules that would be applicable. One of them is about technology and, and filming, and one of them is just about scouting. And the definition of scouting is really vague in the rule, and I think that's part of what this is going to hinge on is what actually is scouting? If you have somebody who's just a fan in the stands observing the game, does that person count as a scout of your school? And I don't honestly know the answer to that. I think there will be a lot of technical arguments made about the definition of a scout. And that's why I go back to the, the spirit of the rule is that you can't do this. But in terms of how the letter of the law is interpreted, I really don't know the answer to that. It's like deflate gate. I think the rule is silly, but if you're going to lie to the NCAA or, you know, Jim Harbaugh says they didn't do anything wrong. Um, they're already under investigation, I guess, for, you know, what happened during COVID. Uh, he says he wants to be the, I think, gold standard here with <laughs> his program. Uh, it's, did they offer him a contract extension this season? And, and is that on the back burner now? Yeah, so we've reported that before any of this came out, Michigan was in the process of working on a, a massive contract extension for Jim Harbaugh. In fact, there had been hopes that that would get done in the next couple of weeks. And my understanding is, yeah, that's on the back burner now. I don't think Michigan can sign Jim Harbaugh to a huge contract extension with all of this going down. And it just, you know, the timing of it is is not good for Michigan, given the fact that Jim Harbaugh served a three-game suspension to start this season. They already have had NCAA issues. Michigan stood by Jim Harbaugh in the midst of that. But I have to imagine for a similar thing to come up now in the middle of this season as, as Michigan is undefeated and right now the favorite to win the national championship, it, it has to be uh, really disappointing for a lot of people around Michigan. Doesn't this come down to the commissioner of the Big Ten, not the NCAA? Because the commissioner of the Big Ten is going to determine they have the authority. They have the exclusive authority to determine sportsmanship violations if they've occurred and what the penalty should be. So this really isn't the NCAA. This is the new commissioner of the Big Ten, I believe. I think Tony Petiti is in a really interesting position here. The Big Ten was notified by the NCAA that the NCAA was investigating this as a potential infractions case. And that put the Big Ten, I think, in kind of a bind because you're absolutely right. The Big Ten has a responsibility to ensure fair competition in its games. Tony Petiti has the authority to punish Michigan or Jim Harbaugh if, if they deem that to be justified. At the same time, I think that the Big Ten is trying to keep a little bit of distance and not get in the way of the NCAA investigation, defer to the NCAA since they have been informed that the NCAA is investigating. But I, I would think, knowing what we know about the NCAA process and how long it takes, I think there will be some pressure on the Big Ten uh, in the meantime, to step in and do something if it seems like the integrity of Big Ten football games has been compromised. And I wonder, because if the NCAA is left to rule on this, this could take years. Um, but the Big Ten, like that could be something that they could rule on, I'm going to guess, pretty soon if they found enough. Or imagine Michigan winning a national title. Uh, you know, that's going to stoke this up. As you know, the further they go along this season, the more successful it's like the Astros, where you go, Well, they're cheating. Well, it, you know, they're somehow cheating. And then I know that there's some internet sleuths who are posting photos here of the signals of videos of you know people who are you know <laughs> trying to steal. Is that the proof here that hey, they have 
a card, a placard that has signs on it that shows, you know, what teams are calling or maybe their uh, their audibles there? Well, no. So a lot of the videos that have surfaced on social media, the ones of Connor Stallions on the sideline standing next to Michigan's coordinators, that's actually all perfectly legal. Sign stealing isn't illegal in college football. Every program does it. Every program probably has a card with other teams' signals on it. So the real question is, how was Connor Stallions gathering the information that he used to try to decode the other team's signals? He had a reputation in Michigan's program as a guy who was really good at decoding signals, <laughs> but was he doing it in a way that broke NCAA rules? And so really, the, I think the incriminating evidence is going to be if there's somehow video evidence of people that can be tied back to Michigan in other stadiums taking video, uh, if if the NCAA is able to get Connor Stallion's computer and can see that people were sending him videos of signals. I think that would be much more incriminating than anything that would surface of him on the Michigan sideline. But Austin, why don't they get up, get it, you know, up to speed with modern technology and have the communication in the helmet, just like, you know, there are high school teams that have this. Why, why yeah. doesn't the NCAA or at least, you know, certain conferences have this? Yeah, that's been a big push. I think if anything comes of this, I won't be surprised if if this situation is the catalyst for in-helmet communication to happen in college football the way it happens in the NFL. I think there are lots of reasons why it, it hasn't happened. And one of the reasons may be that teams still feel like they can get a competitive advantage by operating in these gray areas. And teams don't like to give that up. Uh, but I think certainly from the Big Ten perspective, and I think a lot of people around college football are going to look at this situation and say, this is this is just a, a scandal waiting to happen, to continue to not have the in-helmet communication and create this gray area that it appears that Michigan and, and probably some other programs have been trying to exploit. Well, you had Dion saying it's not a big deal. Matt Rule said it's not a big deal. It's almost like hey, I know my pitcher is scuffing up the ball and your pitcher is probably scuffing up the ball. Let's just call the whole thing off. We're not going to, you know, tattle on each other. But the importance of this with Ohio State and their media, this isn't going away anytime soon. But I'm just curious, what happens next? Well, Dan, I think you're right that, that the Big Ten will have some decisions to make. And if we're looking for some sort of punishment to happen soon, I think it would either have to be something from Michigan or, or something from the Big Ten, because we know how the NCAA works. But it's it's hard for me to, to see that happening unless there's something really, really conclusive. I, I don't think the Big Ten wants to step in and suspend Jim Harbaugh or declare Michigan ineligible for the Big Ten championship game <laughs> when this team is ranked number two and, and undefeated. That certainly wouldn't be good for the league if Michigan is not eligible. So I think there are going to be some hard decisions to make. As, as more comes out, there may be increasing pressure for something to happen. Uh, but I, it's just hard for me to see anybody really stepping in and, and derailing this Michigan team that could very well play for a national championship. You've done a great job on this. The last two columns I've read, uh, a lot of information in there. Uh, Austin, thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks, Dan. Austin Meek, staff writer covering Michigan football and basketball for The Athletic.